The next thing we need to understand about fluids or not about fluids to be able to at least approach them is that the type of flow determines a lot of things. It is a very fundamental aspect. We need to know what type of flow is occurring to be able to make sense of what is happening, to understand what is happening, to predict what could happen. Okay. There are two broad types of flow. One is called laminar flow. Lamine means layers. So, this flow happens in layers. The layers depend on the kind of geometry that we have. If it is a flat geometry over a flat plate, let us say the layers are like this, uh, as we initially saw in this in this class. You know, you had uh, two parallel plates, and there was a fluid, and then the lower plate started moving, and there was a flow that was induced due to the lower the moving of the lower plate, and that kind of flow, the layers are flat with each other. Okay, uh, flat and parallel to each other. If you have a tube and you have fluid flow in the tube, the layers are all cylindrical, okay. uh, outermost cylinder just next to it, ne the layer next to it, just next to it, the third layer just next to it, the fourth layer and so on and so forth. Okay. So, it will if you look at it from the end, it will be a set of concentric circles, the various layers. So, you need to um, take into account the geometry when you try to visualize the layers in laminar flow. It is just not flat uh, layers alone. The other type of flow is turbulent, where the flow occurs when pockets of fluid tumble over each other and uh, the flow happens okay? or when the flow happens, the pockets of fluid tumble over each other. There is no layered flow either uh, like this or like this or whichever geometry you want to look at. Okay? So, there is stumbling and therefore, there are no layers at all. So, this characterization is essential for us to first uh, make some sense of the flow, complete sense is still not done, some sense of the flow and more importantly to predict things for our applications. As early as 1883, Reynolds Okay. Reynolds is the name and this is uh, possessive terms of Reynolds flow visualization. Uh, he showed or um, he visualized the flow and that apparatus actually you can watch in this video or a modified form of that apparatus you can actually watch in this video. Uh, I think the, uh, uh, the layers are visualized using a certain die the central layer is visualized using a dye. Very carefully dye molecules are introduced at the center point uh, of a lamina flow and if there is no intermixing of the layers or in other words the flow remains laminar, the uh, dye will remain a straight line at the center, there is no intermixing. As you uh, change the conditions of flow, let us say the velocity changes and the flow moves from lamina to the turbulent region this uh, dye gets mixed, okay, which shows the intermixing of the various layers of flow, the parallel layers of flow. That is what is shown here. Please watch this video. There is a non-dimensional number. We have already seen uh, use of non-dimensional numbers to generalize some solutions. Here, this is in a different context. A non-dimensional number called the Reynolds number can be used to predict whether the flow will be laminar or turbulent. That Reynolds number is defined as the product of density, velocity, the diameter of uh, or a characteristic dimension let us say divided by the viscosity of the fluid. Okay? So, it depends on the fl uh, fluid properties, the flow property velocity and the uh, geometry, geometrical property, let us say, a characteristic dimension. If it happens to be a tube, the characteristic dimension is the diameter of the tube. If it is flow or a flat plate, it could be the distance along the flat plate and so on and so forth. So, essentially, this is uh, the velocity, the density of the fluid, the viscosity of the fluid, the velocity of flow and a characteristic dimension. 
and you can check the dimensions of this it will be dimensionless it is a non dimensional number. If ok let us call this equation 3.2 dash 1 first. If the Reynolds number happens to be less than a certain value then laminar flow would occur if it is higher than a certain value then turbulent flow occurs. Okay. So, if we increase the velocity for a given uh, geometry and a given fluid then the flow will move from laminar to turbulent the layers will start intermingling to give you a turbulent flow later. If we look at pipe flow okay, th this transition uh, Reynolds numbers is there for all uh, geometries all flows all uh, flow situations and so on. If we focus on pipe flow alone, then there are some numbers that you can put to this which are good to remember. For other situations the numbers are different. In pipe flow and only in pipe flow the following numbers hold the if the Reynolds number is less than 2100 some books say 2000 we will stick to 2100 for this course. The flow will be in layers the flow will be laminar flow. If the <coughs> Reynolds number is between 2100 to 4000 we really cannot say what kind of a flow it is it could be laminar it could be turbulent and so on and so forth. So, this is called the transition regime. If the Reynolds number is greater than 4000 it will be in turbulent flow in a pipe alone. So, these numbers 2100 and 4000 are valid only for the pipe different numbers are valid for different flow situations. I think uh, that is what we have ha huh, yeah before we finish it is a very nice video that I would like you to see the laminar flow is not just in the context of this alone there are different kinds of lam there are different situations where laminar flow occurs ok laminar flow is flow in layers, but there are totally different situations not just a pipe flow or a, a flow over a flat plate and so on and so forth. In this video there is a dancing fountain that is shown ok in Burjal Arab building um, this uh, digitally controlled laminar fountain exists and here also the flow is laminar. It is a very nice video to watch an interesting video to watch take a look at that and appreciate that is also laminar flow. With that let us finish up today it was just an introduction to momentum flux we saw how shear stress can be looked at as momentum flux then some rheological characterization and the types of flows. When we meet next we will take things forward see you then.